And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. All right. All right. Hold on to your hats. Take your digitalis. We are here. We are definitely here. Digitalis? I don't know. Digitize your digitalis. Front! Oh, wait a minute. I don't like that seventh bell wasn't robust enough. Hold on. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. We're having a heat wave, a tropical heat wave. Uh, the high for today in northeastern New Jersey is supposed to be you 98. 98 degrees Fahrenheit with high humidity, right? However, two days ago, uh, a couple of years ago, whatever it was, uh, it was 102. So here we are complaining about 98. We've, you know, already successfully gone through a 102. Well, nevertheless, when you add yeah, in hot. when you add in humidity, well, it's low today. It's humidity's low. Yeah. So what? But it's oppressive out there. Well, if the humidity is low, then it shouldn't be that bad, right? Yeah, it shouldn't, but it is. Oh, it feels bad. But you know what is really bad? It's because it's been going on for many days, and it's still got like six days to go. You know how you could tell it's it's a, it's a heat wave is when you're you're at the market and an attractive young um, a cashier is reeking of body odor. When you smell body odor on a young on a good-looking young chick, Wet, and you know, usually they don't smell. I you, can't make whoopee in the summer. Well, unless we're air conditioned. Well, when the, yeah, well, when, when the weather's uh, hot and sticky, that's no time for Duncan Dickey. When the frost is on the pumpkin, that's the time for Dickey Duncan. Well, I can't do it in the cold either. No, but what I'm saying is when, it, when a good-looking chick it stinks. It turns you off. Yeah. And you know, well, if she's real hot-looking, I don't think the body odor would bother me yeah. or stop Why? me or stop me. Oh my god. It depends on the level of horniness. Oh my god. It depends on the, Hey, hey, how you me. doing? Hey, how you doing? We gotta do a little Enzo Amore here. How you doing? How you doing? The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is the guy is the uh, the mysterious uh, disembodied voice you hear in the background. <laughs> okay. I just wanna um, salute um the fuck is their name again? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 democracy now. The, uh, the, Amy Goodman. Yeah, doc, democracy now uh, has a uh, cable station, and they were interviewing all the protesters that were marching, and those that were standing around not marching. I didn't see many. What at the Republican uh, convention? Yeah, in Cleveland. Didn't yeah. see any. That's because didn't see any. They didn't want to show you them, except you know the people that the people that seek them will find them uh, in very large numbers. Well, They're there, but it's just that the the uh, other networks covering... The cameras didn't care, did they? they yeah, covering yeah. the National Convention. Now, um, what I really am uh, pretty pissed off about is that, okay, the oligarch, the corporate oligarch control of main, mainstream U.S. media... Is complete! ...refuses to televise, from what I understand, refuses to televise any speeches made by Bernie Sanders during the Democratic National Cunt Convention. Give the guy a break. Cut him some slack, man. 
they to the very end the convention they won't they won't televise Bernie Sanders. I saw on Facebook the other day. To, 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 to the end Bernie the convention says it's not over. Who said it's not over? Bernie. I Bernie. don't know what his plans are. Bernie has some kind of a plan. Exactly, because he says it's not over. Well, since the um, Republican convention is uh, drawing to a close... It's over! Okay, and... The, they have nominated for El Presidente Donald J. Orange, did you hear what Donald J. Trump's... The orange uh, head cockroach. Huh? Did you hear what Donald J. Trump's writer of Art of the Deal said about him? Oh, his father was a miserable, stingy, greedy I'm bastard. I'm talking about Donald himself. He was a slumlord, his father. Why? What did he, what did he say? What everybody really knows who knows him. He has no attention span. He doesn't know anything. And he, of course, didn't didn't write the book. Someone else wrote the damn book. A ghost? Yeah. A ghost? Yeah, he was on, uh, he was on television. So if you ask Donald Trump to have a seat, you want to talk to him about something real important, there's no. a good chance that he'll give you five minutes of his time You're and lucky. then he'll get distracted. You're lucky if you get that. Because so important shit coming from him, you know, with the red telephone and all that other bullshit. Uh, forget about it. Well, isn't that um, isn't that a trait a trait of a, a coddled, spoiled kid with a born with a silver spoon in his mouth? Yes. Like their 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 attention span is only limited to their own world. Like their what if it's something that gets their juices flowing. If it's something that they want to do for them, even if it's frivolous, they'll ha their their attention span will kick in. But oh, if wow. it's something else, well, you know, um, um, the the all the redneck teabaggers sure love Donald Trump because because uh, he Ted Cruz he, he plays yeah Ted Cruz. He was uh, he was a guest and was allowed to speak at the convention and he refuses to um, I don't blame him. endorse Donald Trump. Hey, you know what? Somebody, you know, come, coming after my wife, you know, going to have trouble. I, I doubt if it, he may, he, uh, listen, Ted Cruz made it sound like his father was like self-made. He came from Cuba, he washed dishes at a restaurant and he, uh, you know, how do you wash dishes at a restaurant as an immigrant and be totally self-made. If you're illegal, yeah, but if you're coming in here legally, you better have moolah and a sponsor. Yeah, but even if you're, even okay. if somehow you slip through the cracks. Yeah, but he didn't. At, how, he didn't how, do you, how much money can you save washing dishes as an immigrant? None, but you gotta have it to come in here, in the country, if you're legal. Oh, now? You have to be a professional. You got to have education. You got to have some moolah. But the point is—is is that, that why all the all the all the uh, the uh, the fees for all the visas are expensive? You know, five hundred some odd dollars for this, a few hundred for that. Trying to keep people out, I guess. I mean, the immig the immigration process—you have the to legal, pay legal. Yeah, you got to pay a lot of money for all these fees, 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 fees. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you can't just like in my case, you can't just marry an immigrant. Not and, anymore. And ipso facto, I mean, in presto changeo, she becomes an American citizen. Not anymore. Or she gets her permanent green card. They don't do that. Ever since 9/11, I think Bush, G. W. Bush, finagled with the whole immigration process. Well, the marrying thing was in effect long before that. You mean the fact that you have to show uh, a gigantic, the fact is it's not automatic, a gigantic photo album anymore. to the government, the uh, immigration officer. Oh, you have that proof, yeah. But and it right, used to right. be automatic. It used to be you know, automatic. Yeah. But anyway, yes, the uh, the convention in Philadelphia. Now, Cleveland. Oh no, it's the, the Philadelphia is this week. What? What the hell? You, yeah, that's what I'm on. I'm I'm off.
Democratic. I'm off the Republican right. one. But I'm not yet. Oh, okay, continue. Go ahead. Ben Carson. Biblical scholar, uh, an evangelical, and a man who knows the Bible. He knows the Bible? Well, he said at the convention there that uh, Hillary Clinton yeah. speaks with Lucifer. I think they all do. Well, <laughs> if, he's a, if he's a Christian, he should know that Lucifer's name is not Lucifer anymore. No. God changed it to Satan, which means adversary. So even though he still so has... Lucifer, yeah, but he, where'd he come up with this? Yeah, but even though he still has his rank, he he's still an archangel. Well, yeah, you can't change that. You can't kill him. The no. man has immortality. So the morning the star, the, calling him the morning star... Is, is like is like a positive compliment and, and God decided we're not going to give him that title anymore that's the morning correct. star he is now, now the adversary he's the adversary I think that's Aramaic or something right adversary. Satan Satan yeah the adversary first of all the adversary but Mr. Ben Carson should have known that you think Satan Satan listen Satan doesn't waste his time with insignificant no a people he has his priority list, just like God does. It, unless, uh, excuse me, unless you're an important tool for him, and I think Hillary is. Hillary well, is. I'm not an saying anything tool. about that. But I'm I, just I, saying I think she probably does speak to Satan. But the evangel My problem is Ben Carson should have known that Lucifer's name is not Lucifer anymore. Well, the even the right wing fundamentalists or evangelicals that think they know the God of the Bible, uh, but they know nothing about the God of the Bible. Bingo. All right. Their religion is a cult. And um, they uh, make up stuff as they go along. Good. Whatever suits their agenda, they make they make it up. Yeah. They love to cherry God pick. God is a conservative. They love to cherry pick from the Old Testament only because in the New Testament, between uh, Paul's letters and when Jesus, uh, when Jesus was on the earth, it's all about giving, the giving way of life, not the get way of life. And that's anti-conservative. So they'll cherry pick from the Old Testament when it comes to punishing people yeah, punishment. Or, kill, like kill, punishment. or killing them off, you know. They like punishment. Yeah. Um, they, um, they, don't, they don't hold well with uh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. If someone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other. Well, they okay. they're not they're not crazy about helping the poor. Whoa! In, in any that's way, anathema. in any way, shape, or form. That's for sure. So, you know, uh, when a Republican talks about speaking to God, it's not the God of the Bible they're speaking to. No. Okay. okay. Because their their ideologies are not uh, biblical. They're not that that of the God of the Bible. Now, Hillary. Very is very possibly is a tool of the uh, forces of evil because she's not a, a progressive. I hate to break the news to all you die-hard, to all you die-hard Democrats and all you feminists. She's not progressive. Look and, at her choice of VP. And she never was. Hey, remember that thing where um, she, she, uh, it was Easter and there was and there were uh, disabled children on an Easter egg hunt, and she, and she like said out loud what, like when the fuck are they gonna find these eggs and get it over with are you kidding me she said something about yeah oh my god she said something of that nature yes it was uh it was in the um uh oh. it's in the many uh youtube videos that explain the case when she was a young lawyer and the, oh. and the 12 year old girl whatever was beaten and raped and she she took she defended the perpetrator, the rapist. Well, anyway, that that story about the Easter egg hunt was there of the of the handicapped children was there, and and uh, and she definitely you know, like she liked she liked the photo op part of being yeah. there with the handicapped children. But hanging around watching these uh, doofuses, you know. Yeah, basically, yeah, they're, yeah, right, right. And there and there were way beneath her, of course. Oh, you know, um, they can't vote either. Now they can't vote for her. Oh, you know what? What the hell good are they? 
They were they were donezo. Yeah. Of no useful purpose. Donezo. Absolute. But uh, yeah, so um, th that's basically it with Ben Carson, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now with the convention in Philadelphia, I am proud to announce that. Uh, Jill Stein of the Green Party is having a rally there at that time uh, uh, in Philadelphia. She's having a rally. Good, good going. Or congratulations, Jill Stein. That should be that should be fun. And she's going to have speakers there. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure. Where are they going to speak outside, or are they got a win venue? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, I'm oh. sure. The people at Jill Stein's rally will be real progressives because Jill Stein herself is a real progressive. Mm -hmm. And but, but aside from that, and I'm happy for Jill Stein. Aside from that, let's see what Bernie has up his sleeve now. Yeah. It's too early for me to to bash him with my shillelagh and 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 browbeat him, you know, and 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 go on a tirade. It's too early. If I go on a tirade and, and he has a really ge ingenious plan up yeah, his sleeve, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to look like a fool. And then I, I'm, I'm going to have to apologize for like uh, 90 minutes, you know, profusely. Like that girl, like that cashier stunk profusely. She was good looking though. She got mad at me because I threw my empty cup of coffee in the in the basket. I left it in the basket. She didn't really get mad. She just gave me a dirty look and said, is this garbage? And I, I looked down and I go, yeah, it's garbage. I guess that means... And you left the basket? I, no, I, I when I was done, I, I put the basket on the side and I left my empty cup in there. Well, that's why. There was no garbage around? No, I couldn't find any. Mm -hmm. Now, normally I am very fastidious and meticulous. I am very meticulous. I take a long time to shower. Very meticulous. I thought you had a seven bells for meticulosity. I thought you had a that's a, a word. A great sure. flow shower head. I do, but I'm, well, I'm then it I, shouldn't take I, you I have a, I have a thing about germs and cleanliness. I, what can I say? All right, before I go on my tirade for this week. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series. Crapitalism in a conch shell. That's right, you heard it right. Crapitalism in a conch shell. Mm -hmm. Let me see if uh, King Neptune has any messages for me. Who's this? Squidward from Spongebob Squarepants? Yeah, I know Squidward. Those, those two annoy you all the time. Oh yeah, they're a pain in the ass. Patrick and Spongebob. But well, Mr. Krabby, man, Eugene Krabs, he's he's like the perfect example of today's American employers and, and corporate CEOs. He's a stingy, miserable, cheap bastard, and he's greedy as all hell. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He is. But he's funny. But don't work for him. Oh, and SpongeBob is the uh, is the um, uh, stereotypical uh, company man, an ass kisser. Because he loves his job no matter what Mr. Krabs does, you know, holds back his pay, lowers Whoa. his pay, you nice. know, and all that stuff. Anyway. Nice. Anyway. Crapitalism in a conch shell. The kitchen sink. What's his last name? Uger? Iger. Iger. The kitchen sink Iger of the young toiks. The young toiks. The uh, chubby uh, uh, man uh, with a, a blubbery fat... No, he has no neck. It's like Ed Sullivan. Hey, I'm Shank. I'm a young toy. I'm a young toy. I, I, I used to uh, salute him and call him a progressive warrior. Well, after watching the video of, of when Alex Jones of InfoWars dropped in, on his show uh, in Cleveland during the Republican National Convention, Alex Jones and an another man, uh, a famous man uh, that um, Sank hated. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Alex Jones dropped in 
I want to salute Alex Jones because uh, I thought it was funny as hell. I thought after what Sank Eucher uh, Eicher said several times that you should have came on his show wearing a 10 gallon hat or dressed like Stan Hansen, pro ah. wrestler, Stan Hansen, you should have lassoed Sank around the neck and hog tied him and, and went yeehaw. And the reason why I say that is because Sank Iker Iker was kept on defending Hillary Clinton because he and he was yelling and cursing because he he doesn't like Alex Jones' new T-shirt that says Hillary Clinton for prison in 2016. Instead, Guilty! Guilty! Inst instead of for president. Hillary Clinton for prison. I thought those t-shirts were very clever. And you know what? You're a hypocrite, Sank, Kitchen Sank Iker, because you have been so pro-Bernie Sanders and acknowledging the fact that Hillary's wins were rigged and the voter fraud, and then all of a sudden you're, you're yelling and defending Hillary Clinton because of a t-shirt that happens to be true? Well... What we, the hell is wrong with you, kitchen sink uh, Iker of the Young Turks? A lot of the Democrats have entered into the phase of the what they consider the lesser of two evils. They, they know that if it ain't Hillary, it's Trump. Yeah, but having they Americans... Haven't Americans been settling for the lesser of two yes, evils for it, decades and that's decades? That's the problem, but that's what it is That's now. part of the system we have. Exactly. And that's why you always said, the system, system is no system. damn good and it needs to be changed. Absolutely, yeah. And that's where a third party or a Green Party or, or Jill Stein or a Bernie Sanders Jill Stein ticket... Oh. Yeah, that, that's where, that is the answer to get people outside the box and away from the major parties that are corrupt as all hell. No parties. Right. No parties. Right. right. And no, no money in politics. There you go. Overturn Citizens United. There you go. Now, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, vice presidential running mate, Tim Tim Timothy, Kane. Timothy Kane of Virginia, Happens he is a self-proclaimed uh, Christian uh, a minister of some sort, and he's from Virginia, which probably means he's going to be sticking his evangelical he's cultist. He's a centrist, yes. He's yeah, got he's that, got. Uh, yeah, I believe he's against abortion. He's going to be mixing church oh, and okay. state. Oh yes, which kind of reflects Hillary's right-wing. Uh, 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 tendencies or right-wing uh, beliefs because she's not progressive so she's going it looks like she's going for sort of a bipartisanship ticket but, but that's what she says that's what she might say it's not really bipartisan it's really uh, the lesser of the two right-wing tickets you have the extreme Trump mm -hmm. And and uh, and uh, 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 Peepee, what's his name? Kemp? No, uh, pl the fuck is his name? But but who? Where, the where? Governor of Indiana. The douche oh, Pence. Pence. Pence makes no sense. <laughs> He's an evangelical nut. He has a. He's obsessed with uh, defunding Planned Parenthood more so than your average Republican. I know Chris Christie is obsessed with it, but I don't think they really care about the unborn uh, uh, like they say they do. I think what they care about is defunding every single government program that exists. That's what I think they're Except hidden. Except the ones that are geared to the oligarch and the corporation. Mil military budget? Military budget, yeah. That's just a jobs program. That's all that is for the contractors. Yeah, I mean, no um, budget. 
it's like uh, some who the fuck should have wrote it down. This Republican senator, piece of shit, said something horrible. He, he said that um, we just can't afford to take care of our veterans. Oh, oh yes, but, but you can that. afford you can afford the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, all these wars for profit and sending the per military personnel to the wars for profit, but you don't want to take care of them when they come back. Don't you see what just happened, I believe it was today see? or yesterday, in Afghanistan? We've been there for what, 14, 15 years? Already? And ISIS blew up a whole bunch of crap over there. So what a job we've done in 14 or 15 years. Oh, you mean the guy who, was a, who promised to bring all the troops home? Yeah, well, Bar he's going to leave about 8,500 there. Barack Obama. For the next president to, uh, you know. So, so all, the, all these U.S. military bases are pretty much going to, like, still be around. Absolutely. Occupation, yeah. Policemen of the world. Occupation, okay. I had to get that off my chest about sink, man. But anyway, a uh, moment of silence for the, uh, the victims in Germany at the McDonald's. Um, One shooter. Yeah, I mean, it's happening quite often all over the world. Oh, it's happening, and uh, the bad part is you can't identify who they are because they don't wear uniforms. You, you never Nuts know. Nuts with guns. You, well, That's what it amounts to. Well, it, well it's still under investigation, but uh, I, I just want to thank the, uh, the uh, optimum efficiency from what I understand of uh, the German military, the German police, and the German anti-terrorist uh, personnel. They, I hear they are uh, outstanding and they train all the time and they are a quick to action uh, people. According to the Bible, the King of the North, which is Germany, the Holy Roman Empire, will defeat the Islamic extremists, not the United States, not England, not Israel, but the King of the North. King of the North. That's a, a, and they're aligned with uh, the uh, the Vatican. The right? Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh. Moment of Who silence. Who do you think rides the beast? Who's the hoe? The whore riding with, the beast with yeah. all the horns. That's the Roman Catholic Church. The Great War, right? Okay. Moment of Moment silence. Moment of silence, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm happy that many of the more and more veterans are seeing the reality of just how the U.S. government feels about them mm. and uh, and how they're not being appreciated or respected at all. And um, hey, that, that just means more votes for... You know what, honestly? I don't know how Americans think anymore because it's so illogical, you know? Uh, it depends where you get your information from um, and even if you get your information online you have to be careful you have to use discretion I mean uh, I'll give you an example how how Americans are how lazy they are this old lady who's a, she's a widow, a widow and but she's very active she drives a nice car she gets around mm -hmm. she, she runs fast she uh, exercises she uh, she has a college degree. She talks. She's as, just as active as myself and uh, Dr. Bill. You know, unless I'm, you know, I'm, I'm drinking the wine or something. Uh. But anyway, she's she's sharp as a tech. She's you know, since she doesn't have a husband, I says, why don't you get a cat and you know, um, or a canary or no, I mean a parakeet or you know. I said, why don't you get a fish? So she asked me about fish and I told her I know how to make a homemade filter for the, for the fish tank from a YouTube video and I told her how it's done she 
she says, uh, oh, yeah, but does this mean I have to take, I have to actually take care of the fish? Yeah. I says, oh, no. Well, then you get a plastic, you get a rubber fish. You know, that, you that, get a that pet floats rock. Her. You get a pet, right, you get a, well, she's got plants. I says, you know what, stick to your plants. There you go. Of course you got to take care of the fish. <laughs> You know, it's like Americans really do not want to go. Uh, 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 and not that extra mile. That extra mile. That extra that, you know, they don't want to go that extra ten yards into <laughs> the end zone with the football. They really want somebody else to do it for them to solve their problems. And um, it just doesn't happen that way. Bernie That's why Sanders we get said, it. "Huh." why we get dictators. Bernie Sanders said it. Uh, don't expect, even if I was president, for me to do everything alone. Uh -huh. I need you people collectively uh, is are the grassroots revolution. The revolution is about you. Is about you because there has to be predecessors. You, you know, you think old man Sanders is going to live forever? Really? No, there's got to be predecessors to take his place. Hey, even Jill Stein's going to get old. The, the grassroots revolution must continue the right way of thinking and doing the right thing. Hmm. You know, so m m Americans that give a shit about their future, they can't be lazy. And I just want to thank all of our fans. Thank you for your comments on the, our videos. Now, there's a new newsletter out. So get your subscription now. And it's it's a heavy duty one. It's a humdinger. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true, Dr. Bill? It's a yes, humdinger. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All and right, let us... Anybody who hopes to understand... Uh, the, our, our agenda, how we stand, uh, how we, uh, the show, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it's just not all about uh, uh, current events and et cetera. You have to know where we are, and that's the newsletter. Well, the newsletter gives you the basics. We're talking about sex. Yeah, it, it's always something about the five taboos yeah. of American yeah, life, sex, religion, politics, uh, uh, healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare, and child rearing. Yeah, and and you and you, uh, the newsletter sense. <clears throat> excuse me, the newsletter censored will give you the basics. Will, they'll give you the foundation, and then from the foundation, then it's easier to understand all the current news topics. It's much easier to uh, assimilate them and make the connection. Right. You know, like for instance. Bible study, you have to be able to make the connection in the Bible. Well, you have to be able to use the Bible to defeat the conservatives. Right. Like That's you, ha you have to have a concordance. You have to, you have to, it's, it, it's, it, it's not in chronological order. It's here, the, here the, and there, here a little and there a little. But to make the connection, to put it all together, that's where the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman and his God Project is all about because the God Project in 99.9% uh, .9 of the time is in newsletter censors. Is that true? It's always been in there for it's many, there. many, many moons. It's in there. So Ever since you started it. You will learn what the Bible really says, not what all the fake mm. counterfeit Christian uh, cultists uh, Zealot, Franklin, uh, Franklin Graham Jr. And, and his like, his ilk. His ilk. Yeah. Ilk. His ilk. It's like silk. Silt. All right, let's sink our teeth into these readings. Let me see how long-winded we were. Well, I, th I had a feeling we were long-winded. About uh, 35, 40 minutes. Yeah, well, last week we were long-winded, but, you know, we're, we're in a very, very turbulent, busy time this year with these conventions, mm -hmm. you know, in, 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 in the wackiest election year in American history, the most insane. Many people saw and praised the speech given by Melania Trump. Does Melania mean big melons? Melania? 
Big melons? On Monday evening. It was one of the rare occasions when we saw the wife of the man who wishes to be our next president, and we didn't know what to expect. The first lady with a nude, uh, a nude photo profile. It was generally considered a good speech until <laughs> it was shown incontrovertibly that many of the phrases she used were taken almost verbatim from a speech delivered by Michelle Obama in August 2008. You mean she didn't take anything from Abe Lincoln, like four scores and seven years ago? Nothing like that? Four score and seven years ago, I our am father Bubba. brought forth on this continent a new nation. I am the luckiest, 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 luckiest Lucky man the on the face of the earth. <laughs> Many of the phrases she used were taken, oh I read that, the bulk <laughs> Of the initial reaction on the part of the Trump campaign spokespeople was as is usually the case with the nominee and his followers, one of denial. Also par for the course, no apology was given for the unpardonable breach. What is truly ironic in the whole shameful incident is that the words and phrases were stolen from the wife of the person who is constantly vilified and criticized by the whole Republican Party. And especially Donald Trump himself. <laughs> from this point of view, it would seem that plagiarism from one of the Clintons might have been just as effective. Well, for a, a woman that was known for uh, risque uh, modeling, I don't think you should really expect much from her in terms of a political speech. Well, now we, we, we really her, her speech writer apologized. For I don't think she'll be her playing. I, I don't think she'll be playing a key role in yeah. the Trump administration. Knowing Donald Trump, he would want to be in total control of everything. There you go. Continuing with that theme, uh, the, the Trump campaign sent its chairman on the media rounds on Tuesday to deny any plagiarism by the would-be first lady. To think that she would be cribbing Michelle Obama's words is crazy, Paul Manafort said on CNN. Trump's wife used common words and values, he said. Others weren't so sure. Kathleen Culver, director of the Center for Journalism Ethics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison said... Journalism Ethics? That exists? It did when I got my journalism degree! Up there! Is that, is that when journalism was unbiased? Something like that. Uh, she, had, uh, uh, she, had, she had no doubt the two paragraphs in question would qualify as plagiarism. There's a certain amount of content in political speeches that's the same, Culver said, but in this case there are particular turns of phrase that just make it too close. Manafort went on as far as to blame Hillary Clinton. <laughs> saying, what did she, why, what, she was the editor? Yeah. Clinton was the editor of the friggin' piece? Get him out of here, throw him out of here, punch him in the face, throw him out of here. This is once again an example of when a woman threatens Hillary Clinton, how she seeks out to demean her and take her down. Well, it is very possible that the, that the wrinkled face crone Hillary Clinton is jealous of the beauty of uh, 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 Melania, what's her name? Melania. Melania, I think they're pronouncing it. Yeah, it's very positive. And plus the egomaniacal personality. Yeah, I, I could picture her being jealous of the 
the, the, the big mel uh, however the the big jugged Melania however the introduction of Hillary Clinton's name she had nothing to do with it they just brought I that know. in to, 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 as a distraction that's true well they're so used to Republicans blaming Obama for everything oh, yeah. including the demise of the dinosaurs I mean everything. Sixty-five million years ago. No, you know how Republicans blamed everything on Barack Obama. So I, mean, I know, that but was... they say that the dinosaurs were with man six thousand years ago. Oh, those are the evangelical nuts. They built an ark. I know. What 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 state was that? They put a dinosaur inside the yeah. ark. Yeah. Yeah. What a bunch of freaks. Yeah, but that ark cost over a hundred million dollars or something. Where the hell did they get the money? I hope it wasn't taxpayers' <coughs> money. Knowing the Republicans, this, there was probably this, some involved. This is not... This is a cult, man. This is not even biblical. <laughs> and even if it was biblical, you have no right to spend taxpayers' money on religion. Unbelievable. The Clinton campaign didn't put out an official statement, but our communications director denied Manafort's allegation. Nice try! Not true! Nice try, not true. Blaming Hillary Clinton isn't the answer for every Trump campaign problem. No, for, for every problem in America, it um, she is part of the problem. Her politics is part of the problem, yeah. The apparent plagiarism was first tweeted by Huffington Post blog contributor Jarrett Hill at a Bloomberg politics breakfast breakfast Tuesday Republican National Committee Chairman Ranch Priebus tell us his name Ranch Priebus what kind of a fucking name is that Ranch Priebus <laughs> absolved Milani yeah Trump of blame and said I, 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 he I, I, would I, 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 probably I, I, fire the speechwriter responsible if it were up to him. You're fired. That was at odds with Manafort's assertion in an interview on CBS that I don't think Donald Trump feels that there's anything to fire someone about. <laughs> Others seized on comments by Melania on Monday that she had written the speech herself. <laughs> saying it was proof she had either lied or was personally responsible for lifting the language from Obama's address. I wrote it with as little help as possible, I she think, told NBC. I think she most likely has the intelligence of Elmer Fudd. I don't think she wrote any speech. The White House declined to wade into the controversy Tuesday. Nobody from the Trump campaign is expected to be fired over the incident. Yet for Melania Trump, 46 years old, a Slavian-born former model who is Donald Trump's third wife. He likes those Slavic women. You know, I Ivana was, uh, was Czechoslovakian. What Was about uh, the blonde one? Uh, Marla Maples. Ma Marla Maples? No, she Wasn't was... Wasn't she, uh, in, you know, American? No, nah, she was like American waspy from the yeah. South, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Alright, so that's one. Donald Trump's third wife, in 24 years his junior. The controversy marred a moment in the spotlight that had for months been in the making. Even some Republicans said consequences could be grave. Talking to operatives here, the mood is something between grim resignation and the Donner Party. Mike Murphy, a veteran GOP consultant and a former top advisor to Jeb Bush, said Tuesday. Steve Schmidt. Senior advisor to the 2008 campaign of Senator John McCain said on MSNBC that the plagiarism accusation has brought scandal on a potential first lady. 
Some delegates, however, were eager to defend her and sympathetic that her moment in the sun had turned into the latest black eye for her husband's rocky campaign. If you say God bless America at the end of your speech, are you plagiarizing Ronald Reagan? Asked Nebraska delegate to J.L. Spray. You're about uh, Kate Smith singing God bless America with that nasal voice of hers. Here is just some example of the lip. Yeah. This is from Michelle. Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values that you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond. And you do what you say you're going to do. That you treat people with dignity and respect, even if you don't know them, and even if you don't agree with them. Barack and I set out to build lives guided by these values and pass them on to the next generation. Here's Melania. From a young age, my parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond. <laughs> and you do what you say and keep your promise. That you treat people with respect. They taught and showed me values and morals in their daily life. Oh, gosh. That is a lesson that I continue to pass along to our son. And we need to pass those lessons on to the many generations to follow. Back to Michelle. Because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of their achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. And this is Melania. Because we want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. Again, work. Well, all I have to say is... That's supposed to be with Palin! Yeah, but when, uh, when, whenever there's an, an idiot woman uh, speaking, I used a slide whistle, a trusty slide whistle. We're going to break for lunch. You will be joined by our voiceover artist, William Hamilton Morrow III, with promo, and how to defeat a conservative Bible versus simply hit the pause button, read it, and learn. Yeah, and if you get the, if, if you get the newsletter, You'll be, uh, uh, the articles on how to defeat a conservative from my book from the 1990s will be very instructive. So you think you can handle that, Dunces? In honor of, uh, I use the word dunce in honor of my uh, good friend, the great personal trainer to the stars, Mario Petrus. Mm -hmm. I salute Mario Petrus. We will be doing podcasts really soon. Got that, Dunces? He likes to use the word dunce. Uh -huh. Does you he know. put the, 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 the cone on his head? Uh, well, pers personally, I like... Uh, you know, they sell uh, miniature uh, cones in the dollar store. Maybe when I use, use the word dunce, I can use it as a prop. There you go. Yeah, I like... I like put, it on, put it on poor Spock's head. Yeah. No, no, this, these are big. Oh, that is bigger than that? Yeah, not as big as a real parking cone, but... Uh -huh. I like to use words like numbskull, knucklehead. Because of, because of uh, Mo Howard of the Three Stooges. Moses Horowitz. Rest in peace.
people because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay. We're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for doing promo, as usual. Now, j just briefly... Getting back to the Republican uh, National Convention in Cleveland, uh, I just want to bitch slap uh, actor Scott Baio, Chachi himself, you fucking asshole. He said that real Americans do not want anything for free. Well, it's easy for someone who is financially independent to say that. Someone, someone who can pay out of pocket for everything. The haves, the people who have, uh, do not care about the have-nots because it's not their problem, which shows you just how selfish they are. Of course, if you're a famous star and you saved your money wisely, then you are financially independent and you can pay out of pocket. But what about people that are not? retired stars from Hollywood that don't have that kind of money to pay out of pocket for everything well, of course they can't do it and uh, who cares about being a real American what does that mean anyway being a real American it's like that's like a, a born-again Christian saying oh that guy's a big-time Christian John Stewart he's a real last, believer John Stewart said last night uh, concerning the Republicans, you don't own the country. Yeah, they act like they own the That's country. That's correct. They do. I mean, you don't have. If you have, if you have it, more power to you. But if you have it and you're you're arrogant and selfish about it, with no humility, then you'll turn around and say, you know, well, I don't care about those that need it, or they, well, they won't say it that way. They'll still say, you know, a real American will not accept any handouts. They'll make it, they'll make the victim blame, to blame. That's right. what they'll do. Right, exactly, because it's simply not their problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it shows their character and, and, and how of. they, and their heart. It shows lack how they of, are. Lack of character. Lack of, like, like if you let's say you're rich and you're a true philanthropist and you and you have, you have compassion and empathy for the poor, and you do things like you know you might build a boys and girls club in your in your home city, you might build a homeless shelter, you might build, you might donate to a whole bunch of soup kitchens, you might build a library, or well boys and girls clubs are are, are cool because. It gets kids off the street, you know. They they can go there and they can swim, mm. and they can and they can take up uh, sports and you know and there's activities, uh, um, and stuff like that. But the point is this: they're giving back to the community that they grew up in because they still remember their roots, where they came from. It could be anybody. It could be a, a, a professional athlete who's rich, who grew up in a poor neighborhood. Now that's somebody I could respect. Somebody who gives back 
to the community, to those poor kids in that community where he or she grew up. I could really respect that, you know, but, the, but selfish people who just like to criticize and put down the poor that have money. They did it all themselves. Like Scott Baio. Oh yeah, oh, they'll, they'll all tell you that they're self-made. That's great. Let me tell you something. No one, no one that rich gets that way by not receiving big breaks from the right people throughout life. The big breaks in life, no one. He who makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. That is very true and uh, as sin uh, sticks, uh, 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 I'm oh, sorry, as the, as the nail, as the nail sticks between uh, two stones, so does sin stick to buying and selling. That is crapitalism, buying and selling. In a conch shell. Buy, buy, low, buy low and sell high is crapitalism in a conch shell. That's exactly what that is. God's not too crazy about that. He's not fond of that. Anyway, let's continue. It is, uh, what the hell is it, uh, the middle of uh, July 2016, or is it, are we going towards the end of July? It is July 23. All right, so, so. We're little approaching past, the end. Little past the middle of July. Roger Ailes is out as chief executive at Fox News Channel. Why, he said something compassionate and they fired him? His career at the network he built from scratch and ran with an iron hand for nearly 20 years. Wow. Over the stunning swiftness following allegations that he forced out a former anchor after she spurned his sexual advances. Well, there's a lot of hot-looking women on Fox News. It's very hard for Roger Ailes to keep his pantalones up. Huh. You know, there are, is, there are a lot of bombshells. They, they have no brains, but they, they're definitely bombshells. Network parent, 21st Century Fox, said, Rupert Murdoch, the company's executive chairman, would run Fox News and its sister, Fox Business Network. And that's why the greedy son of a bitch, Rupert Murdoch, doesn't want to pay Roger Ailes. He wants to run it himself. Ah, downsizing. Which Ailes had also led until a successor could be found. Successor. Murdoch and 21st Century Fox did not address the widening scandal in the statement on the resignation, really? but lauded Ailes for his contributions. Ugh. Ailes did not command, comment in the statements, okay. and no details were given. This point keeps on sticking to me in my arm. I am personally committed to ensuring that Fox News remains a distinctive, powerful voice, <laughs> Murdoch said. <laughs> Our nation needs a robust Fox News to resonate from every corner of the country. Wow. Cutting short a vacation, Murdoch, aged 85, addressed Fox News employees in New York on Thursday. Details were not given on the settlement for the contract that was supposed to run through 2018. But Ailes is expected to get a payment of at least $40 million. Oh well, good riddance to bad rubbish. Fox, yeah, you know there, there are um, um, tea baggers, which in my opinion is a, is a poor slob conservative or middle-class conservative you know it's, it's like oxymoron right it's like it's kind of like uh, the opposite of each other they, they still think very highly of Fox News and my aunt and uncle does they they vote Republican I don't understand it but I don't understand human psychology I, I never will bingo but uh, you know or human nature 
which is much deeper. Um, getting back to uh, asshole Scott Baio, you know, when a Republican says a real American will not accept anything for free, what about all the uh, extremely wealthy uh, corporations that are getting uh, multi-millions and billions of dollars of free taxpayers' money every year as uh, uh, subsidies and, uh, and bailouts and uh, well, welfare? But they are job producers. Yeah. In China. In China. In India. Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Ailes' downfall began with the July 6 filing of a lawsuit in Bergen County by Gretchen Carlson, who said he sabotaged her career because she refused his suggestions for sex. Gretchen, where he wanted to put a, he wanted her to dress up like an Oktoberfest Fraulein, Gretchen and had complained about a pervasive atmosphere of sexual harassment mm. at Fox. Her assment? Sexual her assment. Ailes has denied the charges. We're in Bergen County, New Jersey. That's where we are. In a statement, Carlson's attorney credited Carlson's extraordinary courage with causing a seismic shift in the media world. He wanted the piece of the, the Gretchen's fro, uh, Fraulein uh, uh, Sauerbrat in the uh, coochie. Several Fox News employees jumped to Ailes defense, but not Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly? Oh, he, 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 hit on, he hit on Megyn Kelly? Did she put out? No? In rapid succession, it was reported that Kelly was among other women who had told investigators about the harassment. He says, he says how about quick blowjob? And she said no. Again, denied by Ailes. And that corporate heads, Rupert Murdoch and his sons, James and Lachlan, determined that Ailes had to go. Oh, so they go. They were going by the book. They were going by the book. The and company they, has no plans to make its investigation public. So Rupert Murdoch, the old geezer, didn't didn't want to bang um, Megyn Kelly either. I mean, didn't want to bang Megyn Kelly. So he he rather just fire Ailes. Within two weeks, the court filing, Carlson's lawyers also said more than twenty women had contacted the firm with accounts of harassment by Ailes. Well, it doesn't surprise me, you know. The power went to his head, I guess. Before the charges, Fox's sheer success had insulated Ailes, despite some previous scrapes with the Murdoch sons over whom he would report to. Ailes was a prominent Republican media consultant who later ran CNBC before Murdoch asked him to create a cable news network to compete with CNN. At the same time, MSNBC was started. Ailes' slogans, fair and balanced. That's what uh, Billy Morrow says about the uh U.S. media, it is still fair and balanced. He doesn't believe anything's rigged. Also, we report, you decide. <laughs> fair and balanced. He was ahead of his time in recognizing that dividing, not uniting an audience, would be the key, would be the key to commercial success in the 21st century. Oh, really? Ailes hired a combative broadcast journeyman in Bill O'Reilly. Oh, that crotchety bastard. And turned him into the star <laughs> of the prime time lineup. 
What about that Sean Hannity dude? He's not as big as Thor. Or as John Stewart calls him, Lumpy. Lumpy? Lumpy. Bill O'Reilly. Hey, what station was Larry King on? Was it CNN? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, Larry King is a corporate company a man. He was, uh, I caught him, I caught him siding with the, uh, the, the richer side of his, uh, debate guests. Yeah. Tales demanded and usually received loyalty from a team that knew there could be hell to pay otherwise. When Paula Zahn left Fox for a job at CNN, Ailes retaliated by saying that a dead raccoon could have done her show and gotten the same ratings. Critics scoffed at Ailes' promise that he'd lift Fox to first place. And she probably got a much better offer. By 2002, he did. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Paul is on. Paul is on. Probably, yeah, she probably, was probably worth her while. Well, of course. If it was worth his while, wouldn't he leave? Yeah. No, so. But that's okay for him, not for anybody else. It's like companies in general. The you, poor they, should never try to get ahead. The companies in general they all cry if they don't get two weeks notice from you but when they want to get rid of you it's like immediately yeah immediately yes. clean out your desk and punch out you know that but 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 and but, what has but what, if you're leaving them they want two weeks notice and what right. irks me for years and years and years is two things what? number one is that people on unemployment pay taxes Income taxes. So that irks me to so no it's end. So the money's taxed twice. Yeah, that irks me to no end. And then, when you begin working for a company, they won't pay you for two weeks. You know, uh, what are you supposed to do it, between those two weeks? Eat bread and water. Now, now, um, Bill, William Morrow, and myself were having a discussion about this. And we both agree that uh, anyone making minimum wage should not have to pay any income taxes because you're you're already getting uh, a chump change, chicken feed for wages. Yeah. You shouldn't have to pay any. You should be getting taxes. a living wage. Yes. Yes. No. No state or federal income taxes on a minimum wage job. Yeah, that's good. You know, and. Um, Unemployment, it's despicable yeah. that unemployment is taxed. Yeah. It's despicable. What, what, what era do they think we're living in? What the kind era of, what, of that the poor must be forced to work? Well, what kind of cost of living do they think we have in the 1890s, for God's sakes? I mean, they must think the cost of living is... Uh, Absolutely. Actually, the cost of living was pretty damn good back then. I mean, a dollar was worth a dollar. Do you know a man who has to resort to living on social services? If he's paying child support, the welfare doesn't count his child support payments as a, a bona fide, legitimate living expense. Uh -huh. Like, in other words, the little money they want to give him, that is not taken into account is child support payments which may be be very unfair and they often are so anyway environmentalists and lawmakers on Monday praised the signing of a law that prohibits the harvesting of diamondback terrapin Okay, this, this will be part three. 
This is the third, uh, uh, a different, a different reading, but a different reading because they signed the law. Th they, oh, they did. The law is now in effect. That diamondback terrapins in the state of New Jersey are considered endangered and they are protected, prohibited from harvesting. Harvest, harvesting. So, so anybody who wants to eat the the flesh of diamondback terrapins, they would have to get it from a farm-raised source, not from the wild. I'm very happy to hear that. The turtle species that were once abundant in the Meadowlands, the Lower Hackensack River, and the Passaic River. Oh, I didn't know that they were up here. I didn't know that. Coveted as a food delicacy in Asia, the terrapin has seen a serious population decline in New Jersey. Well, anything that moves is a food delicacy in Asia. <laughs> As a handful of commercial harvesters and many more poachers have caught the turtles for export to Hong Kong. Taiwan and Japan. If you go to Chinatown, you, you see lots of different live critters big buckets. It's a good move, said Bill Sheehan, director of the Hackensack Riverkeeper. Now we just have to keep up with the poachers. It's up to the proper agencies to enforce this. The law signed by Governor Christie on Friday classifies the turtle as a non-game indigenous species making it illegal to catch a terrapin or disturb its nest and its eggs. Well, the bridge that leads you from Little Ferry, New Jersey into like Ridgefield, New Jersey, Ridgefield, Ridgefield Park, whatever, that is the, is the brackish tidewater of the Hackensack River. That water is called tidewater. It gets brackish. There are blue claw crabs in there. Very large from what I understand because when it comes to shellfish they grow fast and large when there's more filth in the water, more pollution. So there's that and, I, and apparently now I know there's diamondback terrapins there. Um, but, you know, with the environmental um, laws that were uh, in installed by uh, um, Democrats, not Republicans, that the waters are getting cleaner gradually. They're getting cleaner, which is good. Good to hear. So. Kudos to record columnist Charles Stile for his review of Governor Christie's political status from being a rising star in 2012 to a burned out supernova yeah, uh, uh, in 2016. It's going to take a long time for that supernova to burn out with his size. <laughs> I still have to watch the, the speech of Chris Christie on YouTube from the convention. Yeah. It was about Hillary. That, that's why I want to watch it. That's and he asked the audience at the end, guilty or not guilty? I hope, I hope he like stuck his finger in the camera and said, I'm, I'm talking about you, Hillary. Yes, I'm looking at you, Hillary. You know. You know he wants have, to be Attorney General under Trump. If Trump is ever elected. You mean, well, apparently an attorney general that um, would probably turn a blind eye if uh, if a, uh, a, a very rich uh, corporate entity would uh, do something wrong, you would probably... You mean much like L uh, Loretta Lynch? Yeah, and Mr. Comey? 
Yeah, he would have. She would have threw. She would have. She would have locked you, locked her up, and threw the key away if it was a anybody else besides Hillary Clinton. If it was somebody not as prominent and uh, not representing the oligarch, I'm sure she would have. Uh, her and the uh, FBI would have prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Christie, in my mind, has failed as governor failed as a presidential candidate, and most important, failed as a man of conviction. But New Jerseyans sure re-elected him to two terms. They he, didn't fail to do that. He may rise from the ashes of the 2016 presidential campaign, but he will never regain the position that he held as the keynote speaker at the 2012 Republican National Convention. Jesus Christ. You, you know all the things I posted on Barbara Bono's page, she not once replied to me. It's almost like... Because as far as she's concerned, it's over. It's, it's like, done. It's, it's like It's almost like she don't care anymore. Exactly. These are things of the moment. You know what I mean? People have uh, uh, short memories. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, as you see, the mistake she made is she picked a female uh, lieutenant governor, and it looked too feminist, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it, that was probably turned, only a simple thing. That 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 yeah, was not the reason. That turns off. But the, the reason male. was that Governor Christie was so overbearing. We all know. You it all. Listen, let me tell you something. You will turn off male voters if you have an all-female ticket. Just like if you had an all-black ticket, it will turn off the white voters. You know, you have um, you have to feel that the so. people you're electing will take care of you, your needs, not just a certain group of people, but your needs also. But how many people do not vote like that? No, you got them down in Wolf County in they Kentucky. Vote, they vote crazy. That's right, West Virginia, all over. Ah, we live in they a shack. They vote for the oligarch and the corporation. We live in a shack out here in Wolf County, Kentucky, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. we're pretty po. We're po folk. Yeah, yeah, we're po folk. But you know, uh, our pastor told me, you know, we got to vote for Re Republican and not for for those of baby killers. Baby killers and secular humanists and believers in evolution. Hey, you see this shillelagh? It right now it represents me jiggling, jiggling, jiggling around a frying pan. The fertilized human egg is no different than the eggs in my omelet with nice melted Swiss cheese on it and bacon and smoked bacon. bacon. There's no proof that the fertilized human egg is a child or an embryo that breeds like a fish. All right, continue. In the final analysis, Christie was consumed by his own self-molded black hole of duplicity and hubris. Absolutely. I like the words. See, the band is very articulate in the English language. There's nothing like the King's English. A little change of pace. Tomato pace. Here we go. I have been married to my husband for a decade. That's ten years for you simpletons. Our marriage has gotten better with each passing year. Really? How does that... Right, okay. I consider him a good husband, okay. a good father, and my best friend. Wow. But about a month ago, uh -oh. my stepdaughter told me she found <clears throat> text messages between my husband and his ex-wife. Where did she find these text messages? Was she snooping around where she should not have been snooping? In which he says he still loves her. 
you know, I don't like hackers and, and spies and snoops. And writes that he misses her and suggests that they meet for sex. Oh, uh, well, that's not good. But snooping is not good either. The messages were on his ex-wife's old phone. Lipstick on your collar. Remember that silly song? Which she said she had given to my stepdaughter for her own use. Was that Connie Francis? When I confronted him, he initially denied it. Yeah, but the text is there. But I now he admits. <laughs> He has spent the last six months sexting with his ex-wife, including pictures. Hey, hold on. Hey, honey, you took me out of context. I didn't really mean what the text said. You, you misunderstood it. With plans to hook up. Hook, oh, the word hook up was? That's correct. Ooh, hooking up, that means uh, that's not good. That's not a good sign, hooking up. He has moved into a separate bedroom. Uh, well, I don't blame his, his wife for kicking him out of the bedroom. We are getting along most of the time. He maintains that he and that he only told her he loved and missed her to manipulate her into sexting with him. Yeah, but there's uh, when you do that, there's intent. There's intent of cheating. Hillary Clinton had no intent. No, she had no intent. Okay. She, she was totally misconstrued throughout the entire campaign year. He said he would never meet her in person. That's what he said, because he got caught. I know he cheated on his ex-wife. Oh. Uh, when they were together. But I told myself that our relationship was different. We have had one counseling session with more schedules. But I just don't know if I can believe him. He sent all these messages while he was at work. And while out of town visiting his parents with the kids. And I had no idea. Yeah, when he's out of town, there's no telling where he really is. I don't know if I can trust what he says about the affair. And I do consider it an affair. Well... I don't know if I can get past the betrayal. Intent to have an affair. Not an affair. It's like, it's like sex is not sex. It's like Bill Clinton explained what real sex is. I don't know if I can or should forgive him. He seems remorseful. But he's very good at lying. But he got caught. How remorseful, how remorseful would he really be if he didn't get caught? What should I do, Amy? You know, this is, this, you like to say for marriage, but this is a tough call. This is tough. I would seriously question your husband's assertion that he would never meet up with his ex in person. These two have a history together. Why wouldn't they meet? Well, all the evidence points to the fact that there was an intent to cheat with his ex-wife, and there was an intent to meet up with his ex-wife. In my book, there's, the intent was there. You know, he, he could have all the remorseful... <clears throat> because he got caught. Yeah, because he got caught. What is he going to say? It's like anybody who gets caught, even if it's uh, doing something underhanded and un unethical, they're, they're, they're all, they all apologize profusely. They all apologize because they got caught. <laughs> you know, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo, boo-hoo-hoo. I, I work with a, with a guy who uh, was caught embezzling... Uh, yeah. What did he embezzle? Uh, he was up to 25 uh, grand from the company. <coughs> and, uh, you know, they told his wife, they told his parents, and, you know, and he was, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, well, if, if he was in court, he probably would have continued doing it. 
That's it. You got one more for the road? Both presidential candidates will take the stage in the next two weeks to try to sell us on the idea that they can lead our nation. One way to demonstrate they have what it takes to be president is to tell voters how they'll keep Social Security strong for our kids and our grandkids. Social Security needs to be expanded, not just strong. Millions of Garden State residents are paying into Social Security. But the program is out of date. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's got to be updated. If, if our nation's leaders don't act, Future retirees could lose up to ten thousand dollars a year in benefits. With a volatile stock market, fewer jobs offering pensions, today's workers and future generations will likely have an even greater need for Social Security. Jobs are offering shit today in the United States. Less of everything. Before we decide who to vote for. We deserve to know if the presidential candidates will commit to taking action to upgrade Social Security for us, our kids, and our grandkids. What we need, the only thing that would probably, that would most prob probably care for the middle class and the poor in the United States is democratic socialism. It's the only way. Every, anything else won't do it. Every capital, a capitalism was always rigged for the rich, for the top one percent of uh, the economic uh, totem pole, and that's it. That's it. Forget about all your history books in school. Forget mm -hmm. about uh, John Philip Sousa marches and the flag waving and the fireworks. It's all. Propaganda. It's all bullshit. Capitalism in a conch shell. Capitalism was always rigged for the rich. What are you gonna What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Most salaries, the average salary. Forget about minimum wage. Most salaries in the United States are way below the cost of living. Still. So. If it, your wedding it's a failure. was recorded on VHS tape. Oh gosh. And is collecting dust in the attic. Time to get it digitized and uploaded to the cloud. If it can be done. The well, last maker well. of video cassette recorders will cause production will cease production, I mean, at the end of this month. From what I hear, as uh, the DVD players and the uh, uh, the what was it the Blu-rays and uh, Blu -rays. Are, are obsolete already because everybody's everybody's watching it from the computer, DVDs and everything and playing CDs. Japan's Funai Electric Company churned out VCRs that played the tapes for more than 30 years. Selling machines in North America and China under the Sanyo brand. This is the sad part. Can you imagine people with humongous uh, collection of cassettes and VHS tapes that were, were, I mean, a library of movies galore and, and music, and they're stuck with all this. I've already transferred over 625 VHSs to DVDs. I still got a couple of drawers full. I'm glad cassettes are passe because I had some favorite cassettes like, uh, you know, so-and-so greatest hits. You know what happened in the car? Uh -oh. It unraveled. The tape came out. Sometimes you could, with a, with a pencil, put you, it could, back, you yeah. can put it back, but not this time. It was all the way out, and it was shot, That's and it was, and I loved it. I loved the particular greatest hits, you know, uh, and and that's it. 
you know, so anyway. But last year, Funai only sold 750,000. Popularized in the 1970s, VCRs dominated home entertainment until DVDs became the technology of choice in the early 2000s. Now you have flash drives, external drives. Followed by Blu-ray, and ultimately streaming video. Perhaps more surprising than Funai Electric's decision to stop making the machines was the fact that they were still being produced at all. Sony Corporation stopped producing Betamax video recorders in 2002. And their tapes, rivals to VHS, yeah. earlier this year. They, yeah, now they all listen on the smartphones and, or tablets. Panasonic halted production of its VCRs in 2012. I'd have thought by about 10 years ago, the VCR market was dead. The minute Blockbuster Buster closed, where were you going to get these things? Netflix? Oh, not v forget about VHS. But that doesn't mean some people weren't sad to see them go. Many people remember the devices fondly. This hurts my childhood. Yeah, my first collection of porn was in VHS. Way more than any new Ghostbusters movie. VHS. I had a lot of great movies. I had every... It were given, they were given to me by Andrew Anderson, a uh, professional wrestler. Uh, uh, every Godzilla movie ever made. And, uh, what am I going to... I couldn't play them on VHS. Why not? Because... The VHS uh, was no longer hooked up. It was, you know, it was. Uh, don't forget the new TVs. Well, hook it up. The new TVs are dead. How the fuck am I going to do that? With the, with well, I the, don't know. VCR hooks up easy. With the new flat screen. Uh, oh, there's an input thing in the back. No, it's all gone now. Just as the DVD player killed the VCR, streaming video will inevitably bring about the demise of the DVD player. That will uh, probably take place in several years. Which are now very cheap. The day Netflix opened its streaming service, the countdown was on. But you can't guarantee something you watched a few months ago is going to be there today. And if history repeats, someone somewhere will keep making DVD players long after the most of the world has moved on. And to give you a huge whopping consumer tip, if you have Mozilla Firefox as your browser, you install Net Video Hunter and you can rip the music video and save it to your hard, your, drive. Your hard drive. And then with Format Factory, you can convert it into a WAV or an MP3 for your uh, flash drive your you know just put all your music on your flash because uh, the CDs have a shelf life so there you go free music courtesy of Pro progressive discussion show don't ever say we never give you anything here so that's it now, I'm gonna give them one more <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead this is dear Abby another one all right yeah, go ahead that was Amy I am a 58-year-old man who has been meeting women online for a few years. I recently met, I recently met Molly. Sweet Polly Purebred. Whose profile said she was 60 years old. Yeah, was she 80? <laughs> we dated several times and then 
she spent a few days at my house. Certain things she said made me suspect she was older. So I looked up her name online and found out she was seven years older than she advertised. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I consider lying on a dating profile to be similar to lying on a job application. Uh, you're misrepresenting yourself. When she asked me when she should come, could come over again, I nicely said I couldn't consider a long-term relationship with someone her age. But if the, heaven forbid, the man should lie, you'll never hear the end of it. So what's the penalty for putting false info on a dating profile? You, you don't grounds go. for dismissal like a job? Yeah, grounds for dismissal. You're right. She's too fucking old. Dear A.B. says... A.B. 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 Dating sites are a form of advertising. True, true. And as with buying any product, the rule is... Caveat emptor. Beluga caveat? It's expensive. Let the buyer beware. You know, I'm very familiar. All right, I'll finish it off. Many women and men fudge the truth on dating sites when stating their height, their weight, their age, their income. There's a saying in journalism. Yeah, voluptuous means fat. <laughs> if your mother says she loves you, check it out. Not everyone ages at the same rate. Some people are old at 45. Others are healthy, vital, and energetic at age 70. Molly was able to pass for younger than her chronological age. But a man will eventually, down the road, find out that she was lying about her age. So it's going to bite you on the ass. Lying will eventually bite you on the ass. If the number is that important to you, it's your right to move on. But being rigid about age could let a person, a good person, slip by. Everyone puts their best foot forward. Get used to it. Well, uh, not putting your best foot forward is using old and uh, blurry uh, photos and photos with the woman in the far distance and photos with women that are wearing their sunglasses and you only see their head hey. that means they're they're obese you only see their their head you don't see their you don't get a head shot you know down here by their chest and sh by their breasts and shoulders and arms you know you can no you just get the head with these sunglasses uh -huh. and women of course that are far away they're hiding something oh. if, if it looks like they're hiding something then they are hiding something and uh, what really kills me is, is these women that are not all that most of them uh, they could be a average looking overweight and they could have baggage young children they have a long, long list of demands and uh, requirements and all nitpicky uh, 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 demands. Uh, it's got to, you know, I got to have this, you got to be this, you got to be that. And then if they get to the, if they use words like uh, financial stability and, uh, or, you know, anything like stability or, or, or financial stability or if they ask you what, what you do for a living, right off the bat like what do they bring to the table that they can be so nitpicky and fussy hey if you're if you're middle-aged or older if you're average looking and not hot looking and if you're overweight and especially if you have another man's young children you're in no position to be that nitpicky you know unless you are bringing good things to the table because uh, uh, a smart man who's not desperate won't put up with it. Uh, I recently wrote a blog on the uh, Facebook uh, progressive discussions page called 
the St. Valentine's Day Massacre on our wallets. It's very comprehensive, it's a long blog, and uh, it pretty much says it all. Of course there are many men who are pussies that have no, uh, uh, I call them dry sacks, they have no gonads, uh, because they're, they're, they talk tough in private, but they wouldn't dare say anything in public under the blog. You know, maybe they're afraid mm -hmm. That the missus is not going is going to withhold sex from them. Bah. You know what I mean? The, these are the same pussies that are uh, sick, uh, that are ass kissers on the job, kiss their boss's ass, kiss their girlfriend's ass. They're just all around sycophants, and they make me sick. Anyway, uh, enjoy the uh, democratic uh, uh, national convention. When does it start? Monday. Wow, Monday already. Enjoy it. It should be very interesting. Much more so than the Republican convention. You never know what's going to happen. And, uh, and that's it. We'll see what happens. Bye-bye. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.